people who are miserable are the people who don't try hard enough to obtain it because I actually believe, and this is another thing I'll say, I believe the universe is very giving. I think the universe and God himself is very giving. I've yet to meet somebody in my, all my years who's genuinely giving 100% of themselves day after day, doesn't snake anyone, firm handshake, look you in the eye, doesn't lie to nobody, and tries 100%, doesn't get what they want. I've never seen it. Every yeah. single person who doesn't have what they want, there's something in their story that doesn't quite add up. I've yet yeah. to see some guy who, have you ever seen a guy who eats right, trains his ass off, and never misses a gym session? Ever. Not bro. No, Ever. No, no, no. Ever. What? It's just, that's the way the universe works, right? So if you're truly about it, you're truly trying your absolute best, you're going to do it. And I, that's what I believe. I believe the universe is extremely giving. So when I meet someone and they go, I really wanted this and I don't have that, so you didn't really want it. No liar. And here's where we come full circle. This is why I say we live in a matrix, because our body heat and our efforts and our ingen ingen ingenuity are being used by the machines. They are making us go to work and be as the, the hardest working, smartest versions of ourselves. They're using our bodies, but they want our minds to live in a false reality. They don't want you to understand the truth about anything. They give you a computer generated false reality for you to buy into, to occupy your mind long enough to keep you functional enough to work, but not sentient enough to understand your being fucked. Just sit there until you pay and pay taxes until you die. That's all they want. They don't want people to truly understand anything about the world. There's a reason why you go to school and you don't learn about taxes or money or banking or inflation or any of the shit that's going on now. The reason you don't learn the true version of history. It's the reason when you watch the news now, they don't tell you the truth about anything that's happening ever. And the only thing I can say to people is, if you know they've manipulated you in the past, if you're not so ignorant as to believe that you've been told the truth the entire time, if you understand reality, you know that they've manipulated you in the past, why do you think they're not doing it right now? Why do you think they won't do it again? It's all a lie. Everything's a lie. Head to toe, it's a lie. It may be a scary idea, but I promise you, the judicial system proved itself to be corrupt. The financial system proved itself to be corrupt. The legal system proved itself to be corrupt. Every system you use and live under that is designed to protect you is corrupt. And when you in, and when you encourage people to think for themselves, especially the youth, that's what Socrates got accused of. He's corrupting the youth. When you have the youth, the masculine youth of the world, thinking for themselves, that's pretty scary to authority. Because it's the masculine youth of the world that is, one, the revolutionaries, and two, also, that's the backbone of the slave force. If you need people to go die in a ditch in Afghanistan, you need them. If you need people to work bullshit jobs in a coal mine with no health care, you need them. You need the, the real men to go out there and comply with the bullshit, to live a shitty existence, to purport and prop up the system. The warrior class. The warrior class, right? And if enough of these men stand in one place and say, this is enough, that's when a revolution happens. So this is the most dangerous group of the demographic that the Matrix and the people are trying to control and they have to have a narrative over. And that's why they're trying to weaken them in every regard. And when I'm sitting there saying, don't listen to the bullshit, become physically strong, think for yourself, do not blindly comply, redo, you know, resist the slave mind, all these things I'm saying, they just sat there one day and said, wait, most popular person on the planet is saying don't listen to the bullshit. These people cannot think it's, it's almost a sad realization when you wake up and understand that there's a large contingent of the world who cannot think. And when I say that, I don't mean that in some kind of, you know, semi-sarcastic -sarc or, I mean that literally. There are people who have a strong emotional re reaction to subjects they completely don't understand. There are people out there who will stand up and say, I hate Andrew Tate. Why? I hate him. He needs to go to jail. Like, okay, why? I hate him. Why? They don't know why. They... Once you, once the matrix can program an emotional response into you and you can't even logically with your own words explain why you have that emotional, emotional response, you're completely a slave mind. These people don't think about anything. They believe what they're told to believe. They're emotional about what they're told to be emotional about, the exact direction they're told to be. And that's what the matrix wants. It wants to be able to say a name and tell the world to hate them without even giving a reason and just get what they want. These people are so far gone. These individuals who do not, be, they cannot logically explain their own emotions are so far gone, it's ridiculous. As, a, as an adult, what you need to do is, is seriously analyze every strongly held belief you currently have and work out where it came from. Is it personal experience? Is it from somebody who I care about and who I trust? Is it from what the news has said? Why do I believe this so much? Why do I have an emotional response to this? Where did it come from? People don't do that. They just sit there, watch the news, watch social media. I'm supposed to hate this guy, so I now hate this guy. So I know exactly what you're talking about, because you're right. These people cannot think. They cannot even give a reason. There's a guy on TikTok who walks around and says, have you heard of Andrew Tate around college campuses? And people go, yeah, and he goes, do you like him? And they go, no, why? He's a misogynist, what's misogynist? And then they can't answer. 
They don't know what it, they don't even know what it means. Like it's 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 almost sad. But then you live through the last three years and you realize that yeah, people can't think. There's a large contingent of the world that truly cannot think. It's scary. There's a study I read about stress, and it was uh, saying that stress they. Uh, stress has a placebo effect attached to it because the placebo effect is extremely powerful. So they found some of the most stressed people in the world and they split them into two groups. And they're all equally stressed. They all have a bunch of cortisol. In them. Yeah. The people who believed they were, that stress was bad for you and that stress can hurt you and they believed those media articles were dying earlier. They were having heart attacks and having stress-related illnesses. The people who believed the opposite who just said stress is part of being successful. I like stress. I feel stressed. I do my best. It makes me anxious. It turns my brain on. I like being stressed. Lived longer than that. Yeah. The point is, the same drug, how you look at it, how your body anticipates it, how you feel about it, affects the real world results. Which goes back into what you were saying earlier about yeah. the jealousy. You're saying people look on social media and they get jealous and demotivate them. That's because, that's because they decide to be demotivated. I have developed a habit where I punish myself for the smallest in professional actions. If I misplace my keys or misplace my phone and it takes me more than 10 minutes to find it, I'll punish myself for that. Regardless, whether it's I don't spend money this week, or I don't go here, or I'm canceling that, or I'm going to defer buying something I want. I, I punish myself religiously so that next time I put my phone down, I know where I put my phone. Next time I put it down, I know where I put it all the time. When I put it down, I know where my phone is. So when I'm around people like, hey, I lost my keys, all right, bro, I forgot. When I'm around sloppy people, I don't like it. I like people who have their lives in order. When I, when I detect sloppiness, I don't really want them too close. Because to gaps are where people, things sneak in. Other things are basic offset, really basic offset. I like that if I'm around my friends, if I'm ever sitting with my back to a room, this is an enclosed environment, but in a normal restaurant, I never sit with my back to the room. If I have to do it, I like that my, fr I never do it. But if I have to do it, people I roll with, they'll literally give me a gnaw. We'll sit down at dinner and I have to sit here, they'll go. And they'll pay extra attention for me because I can't see behind me. I like that level of professionalism. I like that. I like people, like I said, don't get weak, no hangovers, no crying their eyes out, no cowardice. It's infectious. Don't like that round. No negativity. Don't like that round. So there's certain things that I, 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 I create a very, very particular reality. And it's actually interesting because to me, these things are all normal. But when you have these kind of standards, you, it's pretty hard to find friends. You're like, oh, you're a dumb. You're a pussy. You're like, and you don't, you don't talk to that many people. But if you get a crew together that act that way, it's amazing how, not to get all airy-fairy, but it's almost an intangible. When you have six men in one place who are perspicacious, who are paying attention, who do have their things right, who don't lose things, who do, do it, the whole room can smell. When me and my crew walk in a room, even if it's, it's almost like an energy, some guy can be eating his dinner and not even see us walk in and go, six predators, it's like the rabbit when the fox comes. Like you can smell when the, like the guys turn up. You know what I mean? Life's going to hurt you, and how you use that pain is completely not real. You can use that pain to galvanize yourself as a man and become a better man you've ever been. I'm not saying that I'm only successful because of some chick. I'm saying that every single time that I was heartbroken, I never wasted a second. I was never wallowed. That's what I'm saying. True, trauma's going to come, pain's going to come, but you have to use it in a constructive way. I'm not telling you to tell him to avoid the pain. I'm saying that when it comes, make sure it's used in a constructive way. And still to this day, that's all I would ever do. If something bad happened to me and I got really upset, I would find the most constructive possible outlet. And yep. that's a conscious decision. You have to have the emotional control to make a conscious decision in that way. But I think another side of it is you just need to be also, you need to be uncompromising. And you need to be uncompromising in a very positive way. So I, like I always say to people, I've never been in the friend zone in my life. And the reason I've never been in the friend zone in my life is because I'm very clear about my intentions. Mm -hmm. I think you're beautiful. Oh, we're friends. Well, no, we're not. So are you coming on a date with me or not? No? Okay, good, goodbye. And I think that a lot of the, the biggest mistakes guys make is they, they don't believe they can be affirmative as a man without coming across as an asshole or coming across as a jerk or coming across creepy. You can be, just be affirmative with who you are and be confident with who you are and be clear about your intentions and you'll be fine. So don't be trying too hard. Now, the reason I get away with such little work is because I put such a high price tag on myself. I am a four-time kickboxing world champion multimillionaire. So even, even any female, no matter how beautiful, knows I'm never going to be the guy hitting her up constantly. I'm not going to be the guy she can call and I'll always answer. I'm not going to be the dude who will give her lifts to work. She knows i got shit going on. Remember what I was saying earlier to you about how I've never struggled with females because I never focused on the females. These other game books and Roosh and all these idiots. Worry about yourself. Get yourself straight. And when your own shit's straight, 
about yourself together, females are an added bonus. If you go up to a thousand girls, you get five phone numbers and one might f you. Yeah, I'm sure that's absolutely true, but so? You're gonna spend your life, instead of becoming rich, instead of becoming strong, instead of becoming smart, you're just gonna fucking run around a mall, approaching girls, day game? It's garbage, it's for children. All that is for children. I focus on myself, and that's how I've managed to attain the highest quality females. And also not attain, retain. And sometimes that's difficult, let me tell you something. She might be talking to a real G. If she's talking to me, you're gonna struggle to make her like you more. That's true. I have more tangible assets, more physical, financial, and mental assets. Plus I know the game. Sometimes you're outclassed. That's how it goes. Sometimes you're just outclassed. That's how it goes. It's another thing you can't really control. But what you can control in those situations is that you don't make her lose respect for you. Keep your honor about it. If you're gonna lose the game, there's two ways to lose it. With honor and without honor. So you have to have a system in place that's gonna allow you to escalate and elevate your conversations and elevate and escalate your relationship and her interest level in you. If you're gonna sit there and just message girls, you might be on lockdown for the next six weeks. Wait, how are you, every day, how are you? Fine, you, what are you doing? At home, you, home. So you gotta you got have a little bit more strategy than that, you know what I mean? But then you have to understand, you're always in competition with other dudes. If a girl is messaging yeah. you, she's messaging 20. So why does she like you and not the rest? I mean, it's not easy as a man nowadays. It's really not easy as a man. It's getting harder and harder. I'm not saying that you, you can't get hot girls. I'm just saying that the hot girls are certainly aware of their worth. And Instagram gives them unlimited dating pool. Like, yeah. one of my girls has 69,000 followers on Instagram. Her Instagram account's on my phone, so I can see it anytime. And she gets a message every six minutes, maybe. And she's what? had messages from verified NFL stars, Chicago Bulls, all this. So like, if you're a hot girl, like if you ever feel lonely, you click your Instagram inbox, you scroll through, and you decide who you want to reply to. Yeah. You know, like these girls are never lonely, and they're never not talking to someone. And this yeah. is the element that most men forget, and this is something I try and drive home in the PhD course. The reason it's so hard for a man is you're not trying to make her like you. You're trying to make her like you more than she likes the guy she was talking to before you. Yeah. So you're always in competition all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And the competition as a man is zero unlimited. And that's something you have to keep in mind. You have to be on the ball and you have to be ruthless with it. You've got to have your game in check. Mm. And, and you can get to a point where if you're really smooth with it, it gets easy.